Armando Hasudungan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe. Join the forming group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasudungan. In this video, we will talk about protein digestion and absorption. So here we have a person and his digestive tract. You have the esophagus, stomach, small and large intestine. A good source of protein can be found in foods such as meat. If we zoom into this meat, part of the meat is made up of proteins. Proteins are made up of amino acids. Proteins are basically chains of amino acids. Proteins have a, a amino terminal where the amine group is, and then they have a carboxyl terminal where the carboxyl group is. If we were to look at the biochemical structure of a protein, here for example we have four amino acids linked together. Each amino acid has an amine and carboxyl group on them. And it's with these um, amine and carboxyl groups that allow amino acids to link together. Therefore, there will always be um, a carboxyl group on one end of a protein and an amine group on the other end of the protein. Anyways, I hope this makes sense. It's not a biochemistry lesson. So, if this human were to digest the meat, which contains high amounts of protein, the mouth will first help to um, uh, digest it through mastication, breaking it down. The protein will then make its way from the mouth through the esophagus into the stomach here. So here are all the proteins that have not been digested by any enzymes yet. It has only been uh, physically uh, digested uh, with the mouth. Anyways, the chemical digestion of protein actually begins in the stomach because the stomach secretes pepsinogen, which, once secreted, will convert to pepsin. Pepsin hydrolyzes peptide bonds, so it breaks the protein bonds, the amino acid bonds. Let's look at how pepsin becomes activated a little, uh, a little further. Well, if here's your stomach cells, we have mucus on top of these cells. And here is the protein in the lumen. The stomach cells will begin secreting pepsinogen in the presence of food. At the same time, hydrochloric acid will be secreted to assist in breaking down uh, the food. It's actually the hydrochloric acid that triggers the conversion of pepsinogen to pepsin. And so now pepsin is able to hydrolyze the peptide bonds, breaking down the protein to large polypeptides. From the stomach, the large polypeptides or polypeptides will enter the small intestine. Now, the first part of the small intestine, which is called the duodenum, is the main site where protein digestion and absorption takes place. So what happens with these uh, proteins, these polypeptides, once they're in the duodenum? Well, the pancreas will actually begin to secrete uh, some enzymes that will help digest the proteins. These are trypsinogen, chymotrypsin, and procarboxypeptidase. So let's take a close, closer look at these enzymes. So zooming into the duodenum here, the first part of the small intestine, we are in the lumen of the small intestine. And here are the intestinal cells called enterocytes. And here is, and here are the large polypeptides that came from the stomach just before. Below the enterocytes, the intestinal cells, we have blood vessels that supplies the enterocytes with blood and that will carry the nutrients to the liver once they are absorbed. So now let's go back and focus on the enzymes secreted by the pancreas. Again, the pancreas will secrete chymotrypsinogen, trypsinogen, and procarboxypeptidase. All these are actually zymogens, which are precursors to the active enzyme form. Here I am just drawing the shapes uh, to represent each of these enzyme precursors. These enzyme precursors need to be activated. These enzyme precursors are activated by um, special enzymes found on the surface of the intestinal cells. 
these, these enzymes are called enterokinase. So enterokinase will actually convert trypsinogen to trypsin. Trypsin is the active form and is an enzyme that will hydrolyze peptide bonds. So it will break down amino acid acids that are linked together. So here trypsin is attacking these peptide bonds. Now trypsin is a big deal and there are three reasons why. Uh, the first is the presence of trypsin will automatically stimulate the conversion of more trypsinogen to make more trypsin during protein digestion. Second reason why trypsin is a big deal is that trypsin will actually help convert chymotrypsinogen to the active form chymotrypsin. Chymotrypsin, just like trypsin, hydrolyzes peptide bonds. So here, they are breaking down these bonds. The third reason, the third reason trypsin is a big deal is that it also stimulates the conversion of procarboxypeptidase to carboxypeptidase, which is the active form. So trypsin really uh, buffs up or stimulates protein digestion um, in the small intestine. Now, carboxypeptidase is an enzyme that hydrolyzes peptide bonds from the carboxyl end of the protein. So from this end of the protein. You can remember this because the name of the enzyme, carboxypeptidase, is like carbox carboxyl group, carboxyl N. So anyway, after the large polypeptide encounters all these enzymes, the trypsin, the chymotrypsin, the carboxypeptidase, these, these large polypeptides will be further digested to small polypeptides as well as di or tripeptides. The body needs to break down these small polypeptides further in order for the body to absorb them. The last part of protein digestion occurs uh, on top of the intestinal cells because on top of the intestinal cells there are these special enzymes called brush border enzymes. And there are many types of brush border enzymes, but we will focus on the brush border enzymes that specifically hydrolyze peptide bonds. These enzymes are the dipeptidases, which hydrolyze dipeptides, which are, and dipeptides are just two amino acids linked together, so these. And the other main brush border enzyme for protein digestion are amino peptidases, which hydrolyze peptide bonds from the amino terminal of the protein. So here where the uh, amino group is. And so these small polypeptides will be digested further into tripeptides, dipeptides, and amino acids. Now, the body can then begin to absorb these amino acids. The small peptides, such as the tripeptides, can be absorbed through co-transporter with hydrogen. Once inside the cell, the tripeptide can be hydrolyzed by cell's own peptidases, which will break it down to amino acids. Once in the amino acid form, the amino acid can diffuse into the bloodstream, where it will be carried to the liver. The dipeptides can also follow the same absorption method. It enters the cell through uh, the hydrogen co-transporter channel. The hydrogen can actually be pumped back out into the lumen in exchange for sodium. So when hydrogen goes back out into the lumen, sodium gets pumped inside. The, di the dipeptide, which is inside the cell now, is, can also be broken down into amino acids by intracellular peptidases. The amino acid can then be reabsorbed into the blood. Finally, the amino acid, the amino acids which are just in the lumen, are absorbed through a different method, through a different mechanism. The amino acids are absorbed with sodium in a in the channel. So as one sodium, as one sorry, as one amino acid is absorbed, so is one sodium ion. The amino acid can then be reabsorbed into the blood. Now you can see from this diagram that when amino acids uh, and also dye and tripeptides are absorbed into the cell, 
there will also be a net absorption of sodium. And because of this, water is also absorbed. Sodium is reabsorbed into the extracellular matrix. This should be in exchange with potassium via the sodium-potassium pump. Those amino acids, as I mentioned earlier, will travel to the liver, where they will be used to synthesize new proteins or stored somewhere else. Hope you enjoyed this video on protein digestion and absorption, and hopefully it makes sense. Thank you for watching. Bye.